Welcome to this PALMS demonstration video on the topic of salt lake puddles. In this video, we're going to be examining the effect of flooding on salt lakes. Salt lakes are a common feature in the Australian landscape and we sometimes collect the salt as a resource. The salt concentration of the water can vary greatly depending on where the lakes are located and the surrounding geology. Sometimes they may even be saltier than the ocean. The average salt concentration in seawater is 35 grams per litre, whereas salt lakes can range anywhere from 3 to 270 grams per litre. The salt concentration in salt lakes will also depend on the water level in the lake, which will change with the seasons and weather events such as storms and floods. An example of this is Cutty Thunder Lake Eyre in South Australia, which can change a lot when floodwaters collect here. What do you think happens to the salt concentration in salt lakes if there's a flood? Let's investigate. To do this, we're going to make three concentrations of salt water and make some small salt lake models which we'll call puddles. To make some salt lake puddles, you'll need the following equipment. Three clean bottles with lids about 600 millilitres in size, labelled solution 1, 2 and 3. Some kitchen scales or a tablespoon measure if you don't have scales. A 500 mil measuring jug some tap water, a funnel, about 20 grams of table salt in case any gets spilled, three shallow containers that hold 100 millilitres of liquid, labelled one, two and three, a marker to label things, and you may like to have some labels such as paper or stickers and a small container to scoop the salt from, but these are optional equipment. To start, make solution one first of all. This will be the most concentrated salt solution and we'll model a salt lake with a low water level, such as in summer or dry season. We're going to use 10 grams of salt. Just before we start measuring out the salt, here's some tips to help you be accurate. Pour the salt slowly from the bulk container or spoon it from another container. Make sure all of the containers and spoons you use are dry, otherwise the salt will stick. If you don't have kitchen scales and are using a tablespoon, make sure you shake off the excess salt until it's a level tablespoonful. If you're weighing the salt, put your measuring jug on the scales and tear it to zero. Carefully weigh out 10 grams of salt. If you don't have kitchen scales, one tablespoon is approximately 10 grams of salt. Fill the tablespoon and shake or tap it off to level it. Pour the salt into the bottle labelled solution one, tapping to make sure all of the salt is transferred. Next, we're going to dissolve the salt to make solution one. We will be dissolving our 10 grams of salt in 500 millilitres of water, but we're not going to add all of the water at once. Before we add the water, here are some more tips on accuracy. Pour the water slowly, trying not to splash it. Make sure you look at the scale on the jug at eye level, as if you look at it from above or below, you can get inaccurate readings. The jug we're using has a very handy scale on the inside also to help our accuracy. Once you've accurately measured out 500 mils of tap water, Pour about 350 ml into the Solution 1 bottle using a funnel. The salt will already be in here. Put the lid on and give it a really good shake until the salt is all dissolved. If we put all of the water in, it would be harder to shake well and would take longer to dissolve the salt. Once all of the salt is dissolved, pour in the remaining 150 ml of water, put the lid on and shake well. To make Solution 2, we're going to add some fresh water, like would happen if there was a flood. This is called dilution. Shake the bottle of Solution 1 well, then measure out 250 ml, remembering to look at the scale carefully. Pour it into the bottle labelled Solution 2. Measure out 250 ml of fresh tap water, add it to the Solution 2 bottle and shake well. Repeat the process to make Solution 3. We're going to do a dilution again, such as would happen if there was even more flood water coming into a salt lake. Shake the bottle of Solution 2 well, measure out 250 ml and pour into the bottle labelled Solution 3. Measure out 250 ml of fresh tap water, add to the Solution 3 bottle and shake well. Now you have all three solutions prepared, what do you observe about their appearance? Let's examine the concentration of the salt solutions that we've made. For solution one, we added 10 grams of salt to 500 millilitres of water. We talk about concentration in grams per litre. If we had made one litre of this solution instead, we would have had to add twice the amount of salt, 
This means we have made a solution with a concentration of 20 grams per litre. We need to set up a table to record our results scientifically. Here's what the table should look like. If the concentration of solution 1 was 20 grams per litre, what would the concentration of solution 2 and 3 be? Pause the video here and have a think about this. OK, how did you go? We diluted solution 1 with an equal amount of water, making solution 2 half the concentration of solution 1, so it's 10 grams per litre. Solution 3 is half the concentration of solution 2, so it's 5 grams per litre. The next step in our process is to construct our salt lake puddles. First, we're going to weigh our shallow containers when they're empty and dry. Here's our weights in the table. If you don't have scales, you can skip this part. Make sure your containers are labelled with the solution numbers. To make the puddles, measure out 100 millilitres of the solutions, remembering to read the scale accurately. We're going to start with the least concentrated, solution 3. Why do you think we did this? Pour each solution into the shallow containers. First solution 3, then 2, and finally solution 1. Place the containers in a flat, outside area with something heavy on top of them to stop them blowing over or tipping up. Try and find a spot where they won't get leaves or lots of dust in them, and also somewhere where your pets or birds won't access them. It's also important that they stay dry, otherwise your investigation will take a really long time. You need to wait for all of the water to be evaporated so all you're left with is a dry salt crust. Depending on where you leave the containers and the weather, this will take more than 12 hours, but check on them a couple of times a day. Here's what ours looked like. Have a close look at the salt crystals. Perhaps use a magnifying glass if you have one. You might see some interesting shapes. The next task is to weigh the containers in dry salt. Here's our weights in the table. You can then calculate the weight of the salt remaining by subtracting the weight of the container in column A from the weight of the container in dry salt in column B. Here's how much salt we had remaining. As you would expect, our most concentrated solution, number one, had the most salt left after the water evaporated. And solution three, which modelled a very flooded salt lake, had the lowest amount of salt left. If you don't have kitchen scales, you could also scrape the dry salt from each of the containers and compare the piles of salt visually. Now that you've had a try at making some salt lake puddles, here's some other things you might like to investigate. You've carried out dilutions in this activity. Where else do you do or see this? What changes in ecosystems in and around salt lakes would floods cause? Find out more about Lake Eyre, it's fascinating. When was the last time Lake Eyre filled with flood water? Find out where your nearest salt lake is. Why are some salt lakes pink? Are there any other colours they can be? Thanks for watching this Palms demonstration video. For more fun, hands on earth science activities, visit our website palms.edu.au.